Is Call of Duty the king of the first person shooter? Well it is for now, but that all might change real soon. Crytek is already hard at work developing a first person shooter that is gearing up to clash head to head against Modern Warfare 4 in the fall of 2013. This battle will most likely include Modern Warfare 4, another Battlefield game, and Homefront 2, and it'll be an all out brawl for the title of the last great first person shooter before the Xbox 720 and PS4 take the stage. Now first things first, you're probably asking yourself who is this guy and what does he know about Homefront? Well my name's Suburban Legend, I'm a Yoush director, and if you actually want to go back and check out the first video ever uploaded to Yoush Reloaded, it was from me and it was actually a Homefront gameplay commentary. That was back then and to this day I still play Homefront, so I have put my fair share of time into Homefront. Now, on to the few facts that are actually known about Homefront 2. Not too much is known, but in today's commentary I'm going to give you guys some news, speculation, and some rumors on the plot of Homefront 2. As you may have heard, the division of THQ that developed Homefront is now closed down. Crytek UK picked up the rights to Homefront 2 and is now developing it for release in the fiscal year 2014. Fiscal year 2014 runs from October 2013 all the way up to September 2014. That means that they have the perfect opportunity to release this game just a couple weeks before that year's Call of Duty title. What else is known about Homefront 2? Well, before THQ was closed down, they were actively developing Homefront 2, and the head of THQ, Danny Bilson, even mentioned that they were talking about having the story take place in London. When THQ closed its doors and Crytek UK picked up the rights to the game, Apparently there was a whole storyline in place, concept artwork had been done, and in an interview, Avni Yearly of Crytek said they are working on Homefront 2 and they really liked the direction that the THQ studio was taking with the game. He wouldn't confirm the setting of the game, ultimately saying it was up to his creative team to decide. But look at it this way, a developer from the UK, they're going to leave the storyline in the UK. A first person shooter that takes place exclusively in Europe will give Homefront 2 a unique feel in an already oversaturated first person shooter market. Now before we speculate on the storyline of Homefront 2, let's recap exactly what happened in the original Homefront campaign. Spoilers ahead, so if you're still planning on playing Homefront 1, you might want to tune out for a couple minutes. In Homefront 1, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-il, has died and his son, Kim Jong-un, takes over. Holy shit, that already happened, just like Homefront predicted. Then. In 2022, the United States economy has a complete and utter meltdown. There's absolute financial chaos, all the banks close, there's no food, people are rioting in the streets, and the government is a shadow of what it once was. Kim Jong-un turns out to be a completely different leader than his father was. He unifies North and South Korea, has the economy booming, and has the country on great terms with the rest of the world. In 2023, they actually launch a communications satellite which turns out to be a weapon. It was all a ploy, or a smokescreen if you will, as they had been planning on attacking the US for over a decade. This weapons, weaponry satellite launches an EMP over the top of the United States, disabling every piece of electronic equipment in the US. Then the Korean People's Army as they are called, invade the United States and begin setting up military outposts. They actually irradiate the Mississippi River, effectively cutting the United States in half, east from west, and they decided to invade the western half first before moving on to the east, uh, and essentially, they try and take over the entire United States. That's where Homefront begins, and at the end of the story, you effectively fight off the Korean People's Army with your band of ragtag followers. The campaign had a great storyline, although it still failed to impress critics because the campaign was only about four and a half hours long altogether. So how does all that lead into Homefront 2? Like I said, keep in mind that the storyline is definitely not confirmed yet, but this is my speculation. In Homefront 2, after the US fended off the Koreans, they pull back and they're looking for a rebound. Korea is down but not out, and the United States is still weak from the EMP attack as well as the economic collapse and will not prove to be much help to its old ally. North Korea wants to destroy all of Western civilization and conquering Europe will lend them momentum they need as well as providing supplies and infrastructure to launch future attacks. Europe 
which was hurt by the American economic collapse itself, lost many of its own troops in the bloody battle, helping the U.S. fight off the Koreans. What was once a surprise attack between Korea and the United States has now escalated into a global conflict. World War III has just begun. A United States economic meltdown would completely ruin the relationship between China and the West. Korea, Japan, and China will join forces against the West in the bloodiest battle in human history. World War III is at hand, and the goal of both sides is London. Whichever side loses London will lose World War III. My projected release date for Homefront 2 is October 22nd, 2013, just two weeks before Infinity Ward's next Call of Duty project. Now what can we expect from Homefront 2 as far as gameplay wise? Well, to answer this, let's first look into what went wrong with Homefront 1. Bad graphics, lack of support, rushed development, Homefront 1 did have an amazing storyline, however it failed to translate to the campaign. The developer Crytek will change all of this. Here is a brief tech demo of the engine Crytek is using to develop Homefront 2. Not bad at all. Crytek is a well-funded major developer. This game will have support, a big budget advertising campaign, post-launch support, downloadable content, and best of all, amazing graphics. Crisis games, developed by Crytek, have always been on the cutting edge of what is possible with graphics and current generation systems. In fact, many PC gamers to this day will still tell you if you want to see what your system can do, install a Crisis game, Crank all the settings up to max and see if your rig can handle it. With that type of support, that type of advertising budget, and the amount of time that Crisis is taking in developing Homefront 2, I'm excited to see what happens in the fall of 2013. This has been Suburban Legend, bringing you some news, speculation, and rumors for Homefront 2 for Yaush Reloaded. Yaush, damn it! <laughs>